Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Print Storage here. Today we're taking a look at the 2023 Subaru Forester Wilderness in the Magnetite Gray Metallic. I like the gray quite a bit. It kind of hides a lot of the cladding on the wilderness, which some people really like to hide. Some people like it to stand out on the lighter colors, but I like the gray. I think gray and black is a timeless classic color com com uh, combo. I shouldn't say comparison, combo. So wilderness, most off-road oriented forester there is. You get increased ground clearance. So uh, it's about half an inch more than the standard 8.7 inches that you would get in a regular forester. You do get some underbody skid plates, some aluminum skid plates, engine and rear differential. I'll show you the rear differential, but a little bit of extra protection when you're on the trails. Front bumper is more aggressive. The front end got a redesign in the Forester for 22. That has worked its way into the wilderness, of course. So more aggressive grill. You get the front camera and the bottom portion of the bumper is all cladding. And the idea is you're going to take this off the beaten path. It's going to get marked up. Paint is a lot harder to repair than plastic and plastic takes a little bit more abuse. Now we do also get these, I call them Gatling gun style, six LED fog lights, forward facing, LED steering responsive headlights. Now I haven't driven a wilderness at night, but these fog lights are pretty bright during the day. So I'm imagining it's gonna be the same thing at night. Headlights are amazing. I've driven some regular forest. There's no difference between the headlights from a base to a full load. Get this black hood decal, decal, sticker, whatever you wanna call it, it is matte black. You've got matte and then gloss. The idea is on this raised portion of the hood, you're gonna get some sun glare. This reduces the sun glare for the driver and will hopefully put you in less precarious positions. Hopefully you can see more when it's like that. Side profile of the Forester, pretty much the same as the standard Forester. You get more aggressive wheel arches or fender flares, depending what you wanna call them a little bit more cladding around it. And of course, areas around the wheel well, typically in this area, if it's all painted metal, they'll get marked up from rocks and stuff. Hopefully that's alleviated with this extra cladding. You get the exclusive 17 inch matte black alloy wheels, the five spokes, and you get Yokohama Geolander AT tires. So it's definitely more aggressive than your standard all season tire that you get on most vehicles, but it's not the most aggressive all season. So it's very, very capable. And it is actually three peak mountain snowflake rated. So those are legal to run year round. So if you wanted to drive those in the winter on any road in British Columbia, you are legally allowed to. You get the wilderness badge. There's three of them on the exterior of the vehicle. The mirror caps on the Forester Wilderness, and this is exclusive to the Wilderness Forester. The Outback is different. Same cladding material on the mirror caps, which is kind of cool. It's not painted, it's not gonna get marked up as easily as if it was a painted integrated turn signal for safety. You get more cladding along the bottom, a higher amount to protect the bottom of the vehicle. You get Forester in anodized copper on either side. I really like the anodized copper highlights. I'm a big fan of them, I like the color. Roof rails, you get the anodized copper on the cutouts and you get three supports and three areas to tie down here. Now, these crossbars, are thicker than the standard Forester crossbar. So I did actually a comparison video. So you, the standard Subaru cross tre or uh, crossbars for the Forester won't fit. You have to go with the Thule extended ones. And the reason that they've done that is they're expecting people to overload the roof rails or put a whole bunch more on the roof rails, rooftop tents and such. Thule's, multiple kayaks and bikes, carriers of all sorts. So that's why they've done that. At the back, I like the back end of the Forester. You've got this black strip that is the cladding. Like on the Sport, this would be painted, gloss. This is the same material. So I like it, it kind of ties the entire vehicle together in my opinion, at the rear. We've got the blacked out badging on either side. Forester, and there's your second wilderness badge. All the wilderness foresters come with a bumper step pad to protect the bumper when you're loading things in and out or moving dogs or pets in and out. Cause this is painted, whereas the Outback bumper is all black plastic. We have those little circles in the rear bumper. Now those will actually apply the brakes if it thinks you're gonna hit something in reverse. Those are your backup sensors. You have rear assist braking with this. It's a very cool feature. Test it out if you have the chance, preferably on something like a pylon, not a vehicle. Power lift gate, you can do it from the key fob, the driver's seat, or the door here. So right between these two stars, little rubber switch, and it opens. 
pretty quickly. Not the fastest, far from the slowest. And we have a ton of storage in the back here. With that boxy rear end the Forester has, you get nice large amounts of storage. Privacy cover is a standard. Now this piece hanging down, this is an adjustable extension for this. And the reason is these front seats can recline. And obviously if you recline into something hard like this, it's not gonna go. So it's multiple positions. And there's two little lines. You can see one there and there. Those are kind of the two positions for it based on if the seat is going to be reclined or not. Privacy cover hides everything from the top of the seats down, essentially. Easy to remove. It is just a telescopic piece. You can see right there, that piece will just slide and it actually tucks underneath the false floor here. We have four grocery bag hooks, two on either side. So the idea is put your grocery bag over top. And then when you take corners, your groceries are not gonna go tumbling around. You're not gonna bruise your apples or break open your jug of milk, that sort of thing. 12 volt power point for any charging needs you have, portable cooler, pump for inflatables, that sort of thing. If you wanna fold the seats flat, just pull the button. And there's a button on this side as well. You have four hard mount physical tie downs to secure anything heavy or awkward you don't want rolling around. This is a rather unique cargo tray. To me, I do believe that this these lines are meant to be bamboo. I could absolutely be out to lunch on that. You tell me in the comments what you think that is, if I'm wrong. Little bit less storage underneath here than in your standard Forester, but that is because you get a full size spare tire on a matching alloy wheel. So you can do five tire rotations, get more life out of your tires. You've got your eye bolt for securing things, all your spare tire tools. On the roof line here or headliner, we've got hooks. Now, I don't know if I'd call them grocery bag hooks. They're meant to hold three kilograms or six pounds. So not a whole bunch of weight. And I probably wouldn't put something there when I'm driving because it'd obscure my view out the back but i mean you know if you're camping need to hang stuff up it's good for that we do have an additional hook here and then we have our cargo light it's an led now i can have it turned off or it is set to door it does say door and tiny little writing there camera probably won't focus on that but this will shut off when i close the rear hatch and to close it i've got multiple options i can do it from the driver's seat i can do it from the key fob i can pull down i can close it or i can close and lock it now the benefit to this one is I don't have to pull my keys out of my pocket or walk back up front to lock the doors. So let's try that. Press it, it locks, it'll close, and then it'll flash and give us the indication that it's locked. There we go, so it's locked. Let's confirm that, pull on that. And now knowing that it's locked, when I put my hand in the handle with the proximity key, it's gonna unlock. We'll get an illumination there. And there you go. So it was unlocked or it was locked. But let's go to the second row here. Now I had folded this seat down and that was to show you this material is kind of rubberized. So it's not the same material as the cargo tray, but this is definitely not cloth. So you can put things on here. It's less likely to get beat up. Pet hair is not gonna work its way into this material or it shouldn't unless you have a porcupine. Uh, so the back will get less hairy if you put your pets in the rear of the vehicle. But in the second row of the Forester, there is a ton of room, great headroom, great leg room. Now, if you don't wanna fold the seats from the very back, you've just got this little toggle here. If you can see red, it's unlocked and lay it down. When you can't see red, that's locked. Now, I had mentioned that you can recline the seats. All I do, I pull this and I have to push on the seat at the same time. And that is actually kind of hard to do while holding a camera. So I've just done it with my elbow. And you can see it reclines a decent amount. Not, It's not like you're sitting in a lazy boy chair by any means, but still a decent amount. And then if I want it back upright, I just pull, up it goes. Simple. Now this seating material is the soft touch all weather upholstery or StarTex. It's a textured synthetic material. It's 20% recycled plastic. It's non-perforated. We have both gray and the copper contrast stitching. It doesn't get as hot as leather or as cold as leather in my experience, but it's a heck of a lot easier to clean than cloth. The idea with this material is you can go out hiking, biking, camping, get dirty, hop in your forest or drive home wipe the seats down after. It's great. And it is a dark and light gray two-tone. There's a fold-down armrest with integrated cup holders. On the back, 
of the front seat. There is three pockets. One, two, three. You get that on the rear of the driver one as well. Now, out of the center console, we have two USB ports for charging. They're 2.1 amps, so they're fairly quick. Not the, not the fastest, they're not USB-Cs, but they're pretty quick. And then we have vents. So you can turn off the vents to the second row if you don't like them. But this helps cool down or heat up the second row more effectively. We do still have vents underneath each front seat, facing rearward, but that essentially doubles your airflow. Now, we do also get the high wall rubber floor mats. That's part of the wilderness package in the second row. On the door card itself, we've got Subaru Wilderness. This is soft touch, more copper stitching, gray contrast stitching. You've got your power window, bottle holder with a little bit of storage. And then we've got this. So Subaru has made this plastic and they've put grips here because this is rather tall. You're essentially looking eye level at my eye level. I'm a taller guy and I'm pretty much just eye level right with the top of the bar. So if you're loading something into a Thule, you are way up there and lots of people aren't gonna be able to do that without standing on something. You could stand on the tire, but it's in a little bit. So you wouldn't have as good of a purchase on the tire as you would here. So they made it grippy texture to help reduce the chance of you slipping, falling. Child lock should you need it. Now to lock it with the proximity key, key is in my pocket within 46 inches. I've got those lines. And again, we'll get a little visual and it's locked. Wait a second, put your hand in and it unlocks. Very, very simple. Up front, the driver door card looks very much like the passenger door card. It says Subaru Wilderness. You've got the contrast stitching. Obviously a few more buttons, your window lock, power mirrors, a little bit more storage, slightly larger bottle holder. And then onto the driver's seat. It is a power driver's seat, including lumbar support. The front seats are the same material, same texture, same contrast stitching, just a little bit more bolstering to hold you a little bit more tightly in the vehicle, in the corners. And on the headrest, it does say Subaru Wilderness. It's embossed there. Now these headrests, tiltable, adjustable, depending how you like to have your headrest, how close to the back of your head. Obviously all the way forward, it can force you to kind of lean forward, which isn't great. So you get to adjust it to your comfort, which is awesome. On the inside, by the driver's left knee, got the ability to open the rear hatch. We can turn off the steering responsive headlight. So if you don't like the headlight swiveling at night when you turn left or right, you can turn that off. You can set it so the tailgate doesn't open all the way. If you have like a low, low ceiling in your garage or something, or it's gonna open to a tree, you can stop that. Got a scroll wheel for the brightness of the gauges. Traction control, you can deactivate the start stop and we have blind spot detection. And I'll show you blind spot detection here in a second. But that copper contrast stitching is on the dash all the way across. It's very well tied together. With it being a proximity key, foot on the brake, light goes green. Foot's not on the brake, light's not green. Green means go. Blind spot detection is those two lights in your side mirrors and they'll illuminate orange on the corresponding side whenever someone's in your blind spot or going to be in your blind spot momentarily. Now, it is not an excuse not to shoulder check. It is an aid, not a replacement. Just keep that in mind. On the steering wheel, anodized copper. What a surprise. I, I really like the copper. Copper stitching on the inside. Steering wheel adjustment down here, pull down, and you've got both tilt and telescopic. So you can adjust it to drivers of varying arm lengths, heights, etc. Left-hand side of the steering wheel is to do mostly with audio controls. So you've got Bluetooth, your audio controls, volume, switch from AM to FM to CD to satellite, etc. Go to your next presets, volume's just on the toggle, accept or issue, accept call or issue voice command, hang up or decline phone call. Info button will change the small screen up there, which we'll talk about in a second. And these arrows right here will change our small center display. And it gives you a bunch of different information depending on what you wanna look at. Most people seem to like the digital speedometer. I know that's my personal preference. You do get exclusive wilderness gauges, it says Subaru Wilderness. You've got the copper highlights around both your tack and your speedometer. Right hand side has to do with our adaptive cruise and our lane centering. And then we have intelligent and sport sharp drive mode. So intelligence for everyday, sport sharp is more aggressive, passing, higher speed, that sort of thing. 
won't let you go into sport sharp if the engine and transmission are not warm enough. So let's see, let's press it. Oh, well, it is warm enough. So intelligent, sport sharp. You can see the line's a little bit more aggressive there for sure. So you do sacrifice more economy with that. Heated wheel, pull towards yourself. Best thing ever, heated wheels are great, I love it. Now, when I turn on the cruise, I get an image of the Forester there. I also get, see if it'll focus on it there, an image of the Forester there, that's the cruise screen. So you'll notice that there is three bars ahead of it, four bars now, all the way down to one. That's the follow distance behind the vehicle that you'll follow at if you catch up while using cruise. So if I wanna increase the distance, I press the up arrow. If I press down, it decreases and you can see the arrows going up. There you go. Lane centering, just turn that on and that's the little steering wheel to the right of the vehicle. And you'll notice that there's some gray lines that illuminate on either side of the follow distance. If the eyesight cameras, which are these two boxes, which the cruise control uses as well, can see road lines, whichever side it can see, it'll illuminate white and then it'll give you gentle steering input to keep you in the middle of your lane. Great driving aid for the second half of a day of driving. I only recommend it on the highway, freeway, that sort of thing. Don't use it in town. So, and again, this is not hands-free. We're not Tesla. We're not self-driving. It will get mad at you if there's no driver input after a certain amount of time. This heated steering wheel is absolutely cooking. Last time I measured with an infrared, thermometer was like 40 degrees Celsius. Screen up top here. You can cycle through it with the info button, gives you fuel economy, date, time, info, what safety tech is active, water temp, oil temp. You can change a few of those gauges around. It's also where our climate control displays. So 15 is low, all the way up to 30, freezing to tropical, easy to sink it to low. So you can see where the fan strength is, see where your air is being directed. You get a lot of options and it's easy. It's just a quick glance down from the road instead of having to look all the way down. Below that, eight inch infotainment. It is all touchscreen, but we do have some physical buttons right there. We have access to the My Subaru Starlink connected services when the vehicle's registered in your name. Apps, we have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, AHA's Music Streaming, Sirius XM Travel Link, part of the three month trial. Subaru Starlink, Subaru's removing that. They're getting rid of that. They're no longer supporting it, so don't worry about that but we do have my Subaru. This is also our backup camera, put it in reverse. Backup camera pops up. It does show you the top of the marble there. It is kind of hard to see in the shade. Parking sensors are going off saying we're close. I want to turn those off, press and hold, and rear assist braking's on. So if it thought I was gonna reverse into that wall faster than one kilometer an hour, less than 15, it would apply the brakes. Terrifying when it stops you, but it's great. I do have a video earlier on my channel, probably back from 2017 or 2018, showing how the reverse automatic braking works. It's pretty cool. You might want to check it out or have your salesperson give you a demo. CD player is right underneath the screen. Volume and tuning knobs, despite having those on your steering wheel. So you kind of double up. They still have the traditional ones. Below that, we have our climate control. So we have driver side temperature, passenger side temperature, fan strength. It's synced together. That means the temperatures are both the same for driver and passenger and just controlled from the driver's side. So if I adjust it up, they're adjusting the same. We have AC and max AC. Max AC is the cold stuff. AC is conditioning the air so you don't fog up. It's moving moisture around. Mode changes where airflow is being directed. And then you've got recirculate, your heated mirrors, back window and area of the windshield, front defrost. Down here, little storage cubby with two USBs, an aux port and a 12 volt outlet for any charging needs. USBs are for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. But you can also plug in a flash drive with music on it, stuff like that. Automatic CVT transmission. Again, more anodized copper highlights. We do have the ability to go to manual mode and use the paddles to manually select our shifter, our gears, sorry. Left is downshift, little negative sign. Right is upshift. You can see I'm in second gear, I'm in first. It's not gonna let me start off in sixth, but so it does have some limits on it to protect itself, which is great. Below that, a few more buttons. Heated seats, high and low. X mode, dual function X mode. So. X mode is like 4x4 low in a pickup. It's for the extreme stuff. Twist to the left. You get X mode, downhill descent. And that's the little green one right there is downhill descent. And then we have rough terrain mode. That's indicating that you're in X mode and it automatically goes to the off-road mode screen. Shows we're on a two degree tilt to the left and a one degree tilt forward. If I twist to the right, that gives us deep snow and mud mode. 
and it also turns off traction control to allow for excess wheel spin to chew you out of any situation. Now, if you exceed 40 kilometers an hour, it kicks out. And then with the wilderness, if you drop down below, I believe it's 35 kilometers an hour, it re-engages. So it's got some built-in safeties. And if you're driving 100 kilometers an hour and someone reaches over and does that, nothing bad's gonna happen. It's just gonna sit, go beep beep. I can't do that, sorry. Turn off by pressing that. We have electronic parking brake, auto vehicle hold, which is a brake holder, front camera. When I press that, you get the front camera. It's almost 180 degrees, perfect for off-roading on skinnier trails or great for parking lots. Make sure you're not gonna hit that parking barricade ahead of you, especially when it's new and you don't know where all your corners are. Cup holders with media storage. We've got an armrest with a 12 volt outlet in it and a place to run cords so you don't crush them. The front wilderness mats have wilderness on them. My favorite feature ever that comes with this, auto dimming rear view mirror. There's no switch to flick. If someone has their high beams on behind you, it just automatically dims. It is great. We have a compass, we're facing northeast, and it's got the home link system. So those three buttons, you can hook your garage door up to your mirror so you don't have to carry an opener with you. It's great. Headliner is dark, whereas most other Foresters are, I believe all of them actually, all the others are the lighter interior up top. We have lane sway assistance, so it'll beep at you if you cross lines without signaling, automatic emergency braking, try to stop you from hitting pedestrian, cyclists, or other vehicles. Those systems all use the eyesight cameras. And here in British Columbia, you do save 10% on your basic insurance with that. SOS and roadside, that is part of the connected services trial you get with most new Subarus, that is three years. Allows you to download the My Subaru app and remote start it from your phone, lock and unlock doors, locate it on a map, lots of things like that. App lights or LEDs, sunglass storage, and then we do have the panoramic Sunroof. It is slide only. It is giant. It is pretty much extended into the second row. We're going to close that because the sun's out and it's hot. Now, I do realize I did tell you guys I was going to show you the rear differential skid plate and I didn't. Let's take a look at that. So, it is right there. You can uh, see that little plate. It's attached. Protect the rear differential in the event you are off-road and it may come in contact with some rocks or something like that, a log, a stick, something that you don't want hitting the soft parts of your car, the integral parts of your car. So that is a quick overview of the 2023 Subaru Forester Wilderness in the Magnetite Gray Metallic. I'm Tyson, the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George. If you guys have any questions about this vehicle, any of the vehicles in our lineup, or any of the tech in our lineup, please put it in the comments below. I'm always looking to answer you guys' questions and making new content new videos if there's something I haven't covered. So again, thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.